Now we're going to talk about semiconductors, radiation detectors. This rather naturally leads to the question of exactly what's a semiconductor. Let's turn to the energy diagrams that are used in solid state physics. And I can explain this rather easily. These pictures are basically schematics of where the electrons stay in a material. The bottom band is called the valence band. And the electrons in here are electrons that form bonds with neighboring atoms. The conduction band represents a state within the material where the electrons can move freely from atom to atom. At room temperature, if the valence band is separated from the conduction band by more than about five electron volts, thermal agitation caused by thermal energies cannot promote these electrons up to the conduction band. These materials are insulators. They neither conduct electricity nor heat very well. Examples are glass, ceramics, wood. You get the idea. There are some materials uh, almost all metals, for example, that the conduction band and the valence band overlap, as shown here. This means that there are always free electrons that can move from atom to atom easily. These materials are good conductors of electricity and good conductors of heat. Examples would be aluminum, copper, silver, and gold. There is also a strange group of actors that are called semiconductors, in which the valence band and the conduction bands are separated by about one electron volt. Thermal energies can kick electrons up into this conduction band, but it's rare. And these promoted electrons fall back into the valence band fairly quickly. Other electrons are promoted and they fall back, so the conduction band is being continuously filled and continuously emptied, and so it's partially filled at best. We can exploit this narrow band gap to make a radiation detector. If we cool the semiconducting material down to liquid nitrogen temperatures, the conduction band will be empty because thermal energies are now too low to kick the electrons into the conduction band, and the conduction band quickly drains of electrons. Radiation interacting in the semiconductor can promote electrons into the conduction band. An applied voltage will sweep these electrons and holes left by these missing electrons out of the detector. Thus, semiconductor detectors are solid state devices that operate essentially like ionization chambers. The charge carriers in the semiconductors are not electrons and ions, as in gas counters, but electrons and holes. Radiation incident upon the semiconducting junction produces these electron-hole pairs as it passes through it, and these electrons and holes are swept away under the influence of an electric field, and proper electronics collect the charge and create a pulse. As shown in the diagram here, the p-n junction is made as thin as possible. By applying reverse bias voltage, the depleted region that acts as the detector can be made fairly large.